more regularly, Adam, as we move into the women's K2 500 meter final. And of course, the uh, big talking point here was the disqualification of uh, Katlin Kovac and Natasha Janic yesterday for an underweight boat. So we'll not see them race off against their compatriots of uh, Tamara Chepesh and Gabrielle Zabo. But it's, uh, it's d difficult, definitely unfortunate, um, and you know, kind of inexcusable a little bit. You got to weigh your boat on the way up to the start line. Um, that's a, a boat with a heralded history. They race in the same boat that they raced in the Athens Olympics and the Beijing Olympics. So you'd think that they'd have that boat trimmed up nice, but they must have changed something at the last minute and just got it. You know, a lot of uh, of athletes keep their boat pretty close to the the 12 or the 16 kilo mark but that was unfortunate unfortunate for the athletes racing here they probably would have liked to have they're away with australian one hungary and two slovakia and three belarusia and four poland and five germany and six sweden and seven france in eight and austria in nine austria the current world champions but there's lots of quality in here we've got uh, weber and dietz in six from germany and they seem to be right up there along with the belarusian pair of kudzenka and polteran part of the belarusian k4 that's right uh, one of the hot properties about at the minute on the far side as well lane two that's uh, sabo and Chipe having a good start we're looking at the germans here center picture francesca weber weber and tina dita in uh, lane six there looking very very strong out not afraid to uh take it out hard in this k2 500 important to note that the former world championship last year's world champions uh victoria schwartz and yvonne Scherling had to paddle up the side of the course on the inside of the course to get back to the start line up to the k2 200 so they're really uh, piling on the race races this weekend they'll be tired ladies going home tonight but as we look across it is the germans that take them through hungarians i think in lane two gabriela zabo and tamara chipesh um, very strong looking second half from them coming through from lane two and it's still the germans here in lane number six that seem to have a narrow lead ahead of hungary in two close behind have the poles in five and belarusia in four they're not out of the medal placing yet we'll expect a good finish here from the belarusian pair in lane four they had a great semi-final yesterday but the poles don't seem to be letting off in lane five the but germans really are they pedal down as they push towards the line they're taking out about a boat length lead over the hungarians with the poles in five pushing through for that bronze medal place yeah it looked like actually almost that was a full boat length lead from the germans so that was uh quite a show of dominance there and again unfortunate that we didn't see the uh olympic champions from hungary due to the underweight boat in this race but a fantastic race from francesca weber and tina Dietze in lane six and you can only race who's in front of you in the start line adam and right. uh we'll s i'm sure we'll see more of those uh those athletes at London in 2012, and they'll be happy to uh, have signed off with a win today in the Women's K2 500. Also saw a great race from Josephine Nordlo and Karin Johansson from Sweden, who qualified at the Pan Ams, or sorry, at the uh, the European qualifiers uh, last weekend in Poznan. Uh, they are. Uh, yeah, you definitely see Poland coming through in third place, just ahead of Belarus, and fourth place, either going to. Austria or Slovakia in this women's K2 500 meter event. Here we see the start. Austria off to a good start, as well as Germany, Belarus. Did a good shot of the Belarusian pair. Employing that typical lower stroke rate the Russian countries and former Eastern Bloc countries tend to employ. So I guess this will be a little bit of a selection discussion back in Hungary now about who will maybe get the nod. I understand they're not finalizing the team for another couple of weeks. But uh, Chepesh and uh, Zabo there did a, a reasonable job in coming in in second place. Uh, similar to the Germans, the Hungarians tend to uh, select on the basis of potential for a gold medal at the Olympics only. So uh, they're very, very picky with regards to who they send the Olympics to because they have high expectations, as they should given their tradition and history. Um, but, uh, you know, most countries would be very, very pleased with a silver medal. But in the case of Hungary, I think you might expect uh, them to go back to the drawing board, so to speak, and, and make sure they can't field a faster crew. Sure. And of course, they, I mean, we haven't seen their K4 out. That's typical of the Hungarians as well. They leave it really late uh, till they decide who the best athletes are to put in the boat. They've got a lot of girls to choose from. Uh, you know, yesterday we saw a great uh, bronze medal performance from Krista Zur, who uh, lives in California now with her husband, Rami. 
and uh, she's racing for Hungary again. So. And there's the 